In chapter 10 so far, we've talked about radicals. We've talked about radical expressions. We've talked about converting rational exponents into radicals. Now let's start talking about multiplying radical expressions. Now we have a product rule for radicals that says we can multiply two radicals together as long as they have the same radical. Uh, we can combine those square roots or cube roots into the same radical as long as they have the same radical. So they both have to be the same square root, uh, cube root, or so on. For example, uh, let's say we have the square root of 4 times the square root of 25. Now we know that the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 25 is 5 and I can say then that 2 times 5 is 10. Or, if there wasn't an even square root of 4 or an even square root of 25, what I can do, because they're both underneath the same radical, they're both square roots, we can instead of doing them separately, we can combine them into the same radical. We could say that the, we have the square root of 4 times 25. 4 times 25 is 100, and the square root of 100 is 10. So you can see they're the same value. This works as long as they're underneath the same radical. You cannot multiply a square root with a cube root or a cube root with a fifth root or so on. Okay, let me show you some examples of that. It says here in example number one to multiply. So a says the square root of six times the square root of five. Well, there is no even square root of six, a whole number. There is no whole number square root of five. But what I can do, because they're both underneath the same index radical, I can multiply them together and say the square root of six times the square root of five is the same thing as the square root of 30. Now, there also isn't a square root, an even square root of 30, but we can go ahead and still combine it and simplify the answer and say my answer is the square root of 30. Look at B. B says we have the fourth root of four and the fourth root of 10. Since they're both underneath a fourth root, I can combine them into one and say that I really have the fourth root of 40. Now we can see if there's a number that multiplies four times to give us 40, but I don't know if there is. So it looks like that would be our final answer. C says that we have an x minus a and an x plus a, and we want to multiply them together. Um, they're both underneath the same radical, so I should be able to multiply them underneath the same radical. Now you could foil, distribute, and combine like terms, and you would end up getting x squared minus a squared. Now be careful. Please don't try to take the squares and the square roots and cancel them out and say that your answer is x minus a, because that would mean that you actually have an x minus a and you have two of those so that they cancel out, which you don't. You have an x minus a and an x plus a. Because there's a plus or minus sign, you cannot just cancel those roots, those squares and the roots, um, together. You have to just leave it like that. So our final answer on this one would be the square root of x squared minus a squared. D has the cube root of 7p over 6 times the cube root of 5 over q. Because they're underneath the same root, I could combine them together and say that I really have the cube root of 35p, I got that by doing 7 times 5, over 6q. I have the cube root of 35p over 6q. Now, if I could reduce 35 and 6, I would want to. Um, if I could reduce p's and q's, then I would want to do that if they were both p's or both q's or something like that. But it doesn't look like I'm able to reduce any more than it already is, so that would be my final answer on that one. So as long as I have the same indexes, I should be able to take the two radicals, combine them into one, and maybe that'll help me simplify for later on.